Okay, I think we can uh, we can start. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to a new Looking Head talk. My name is Ricardo from Rome, and I will be the moderator of this meeting. Today, we, uh, we have with us uh, Anna Nagy. Anna has worked uh, in almost every side of communication and uh, as a single mom, she founded an NGO to help one parent families. And now she has set up a center for them. So Anna, please uh, tell all this uh, in about uh, 15 minutes. And then we will, when we will have uh, um, uh, end, we will have uh, the time for questions where participants can write their questions on the chat box. And please say if you want me to read them or if you want to do it directly with your come on when I give you the floor. So thanks everybody uh, to be here and let's start giving the floor to our special guest, Anna Nagy. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Let me just uh, set my clock so that I won't run over time. Um, so as you said, Ricardo, I'm a... Uh, I'm a journalist, a communication expert, but in the last four years, I have been heading Hungary's first single parent center. Uh, when I was 10 and 15 and 20 and even 25, I dreamt of having a big house with a big garden with a dog and to have two or three children and a nice and understanding husband. And I think this is um, the kind of dream that every girl and everybody and almost everybody has. Um, as you can see, I, I have been heading the single parent center. It means that something went wrong, something came out differently, something turned out different, differently on the way. And when I became a single mother, I thought that I was the only one. I thought I was the first one on earth and that my child would be the first child being brought up by only one parent. And being a journalist, I started to do researches and I tried, to, to, I tried to, to figure out what is happening with single parents after it happened to me. And what I had to realize was that it's not only me and it's not only my child, that this is something that happens to very, very many people. Let me just give you some short numbers about single parent families all over. In Hungary, which is a country of a little bit less than 10 million people, we have about 300,000 uh, families living only with mom or dad. In the last 40 years, this ratio has doubled, which is quite a big thing. There is a total of more than half a million children br being brought up by a single parent here in our country. But it's not only a Hungarian phenomenon, in the European Union and in, the e, uh, in Europe, a minimum of 30%, that means almost one third of the next generation of children will be brought up by single parents in the entire childhood they have or in part of their childhood. In the United States, we talk about 22 million children living in single parent families. And when we take a look at the world, we see that it is more than 300 million children, around 320 million children being brought up by a single parent. And it's not only about the number of single parent families, it is also their way of life. Uh, in 2012, more than half of single parent families were in need in the world. It means that the risk of poverty for these children is much higher than for other uh, uh, target groups, other social groups. There are very many reasons why somebody can become a single parent and why children can get into such a, a situation. Uh, there are many parents who get divorced, but it's not only divorce. I know that the first thought is al almost always about divorcing but we talk about a lot of parents and not only old parents or older parents who lose their partner, uh, who are widowed. And there are many parents who, who bring up their child on their own, either by choice or because they were forced 
to be a single parent. We have been working with single parents for many years. And what I see is that in um, not only a few cases, parents have to make a choice between abortion or single parenting. And very often they choose the second one. Being a single parent is not only double responsibility, double task, it's also a lot of double time, double energy for parents and for the children. We would like to see the world as such as this picture that I'm showing you, but in many of the cases, it looks like this. And when you are a single parent, it doesn't only influence your family life, it will influence your financial position, it will influence your children's equal or unequal opportunity, it will influence the way you can work, your employment, your health problems or the lack of problems, and it will influence the everyday routine, the logistics, and how you manage your life and how your child manages his or her life. What Ricardo mentioned is uh, our single parent center, which was set up, um, well, around three years ago. I'm saying around because the preparation was a long process as this type of a single parent center is, um, is kind of unique. We didn't have a pattern, we didn't have a model to follow, so we had to build up what we would like to do and how we would like to do it. The single parent center was finally open in 2018. And um, so it, we are getting close to three years that it was the end of May. But the foundation, the charity, the organization which is behind this center was created more than 15 years ago. So we have met many, many families in these last 15 years. So what is Single Parent Center in Budapest? Partially, it is a community space with offices that parents can, can use for working. They can use it for meetings. They can use it just for uh, having some time for their, for their own. We organize events, we organize conferences, and we give a lot of different services in this center. Let me just show you the areas that we work on. We have, of course, a help in crisis function because becoming a single parent is always a trauma. It's a trauma not only for the parent, it's a trauma also for the child. So we give legal help, we give psychological help, we give help, for example, in food or in clothes, if this is the problem. And we give company, we give community, because isolation is a very serious problem for these families. We give help with employment because poverty can be mainly um, beaten by work. It doesn't only mean giving uh, workshops and training sessions. It practically means finding a job for these parents as well. Uh, in the last close to three years, we have found jobs for more than 100 parents. It means that we have very intense and everyday contacts with companies who can be employers as well. We have a lot of communal programs, different uh, events, feasts uh, for children and for, for the parents as well. We try to help parents about how to be a good parent when you are alone. This is why we have different parental support programs and groups to help uh, them how to be and stay uh, good parents for the children. We have a lot of activities for kids, uh, not only programs, but also, for example, mentoring for school, which is very important, especially now when many kids have to learn from home online. So they have to find some kind of a, a support in that too. And of course, we work on prevention. We have several uh, groups for, for example, families who have started a new life, meaning patchwork families who used to be single parent families as well. 
But second marriages are much more vulnerable than the first one. So this is why we have to, or we try to help them not to become single parent families again. Because for a child to become single parent children for the second time is even harder. So this is why we have programs and groups for them for prevention. I, uh, let me see. Yes. We also have a playhouse because um, whenever we have programs, uh, where to put the child is usually the number one question for parents. So we also offer child care and uh, we also give special education sessions. So this is a playhouse not only for, for, for kids who have um, general needs, but also special need kids. And also we have a cafe. So when somebody enters the single parent center, they can just sit down, they can relax, they can have some time for their own because this is something which is very much of a problem for single parents, time, energy, and money, of course. So let's see what we have done in these last, let's say three years. Uh, we have helped more than 14,000 families in these last 32 months. We have helped them with services, with leisure activities, camping, holidays. We have helped them with programs, events, and child care. Our center is working with 12 colleagues, and we have more than 70 70 volunteers who, who are with us in many different areas of our job. So we are very close to like a, a middle-sized company with all our colleagues and the people who work with them are really very devoted people, single parents and not single parents themselves. We tend to think that the world is the way we would like it to be, but it is not always the case. So when you think of your own environment, I think it is very important to think of how many people you know who live in single parent families around you. These families are in a difficult situation, especially in the beginning, and it is very hard to find help and support in this situation. So what can you do for single parents? If you are an individual, sometimes it is just enough to look around and see, see your neighbor, see your family, see your friends who can be in this situation. Sometimes it's, it's enough to go there and ask whether they need something from the pharmacy when the kid is sick, or to ask whether you can babysit for the child for an hour or two so that they can do their jobs or do their, their duties. If you work for a company or if you lead a company, you can help as a business decision maker, for example, creating um, a better environment, a better working environment for these parents, because um, we very often talk about work life balance. Well, work, work life balance sometimes is just a dream for single parents and as an organization. Uh, you can and you must raise your voice for these families because they are still invisible. When you think back of the numbers that I showed you in the beginning, there are many, many families like that in the world. Still, we don't think of them very often. Still, they are invisible. And when you think about these families, you also have to think about what these children will become when they grow up. When we help parents now, it means that we help children of the future, that we have the parents of the future. And if we arrange a quiet and happy life for these children, then they will have a better chance not to become single parents themselves. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Anna. Thanks uh, for sharing your experience. At this point, uh, I ask our auditors if there are any questions. 
And I remind you that you can uh, write it in the box, uh, in the chat box, or you can do it with your come on. Let's see if there are any questions. Yes, good morning, Ricardo. May I? Good morning, Idris. Hi. Welcome. Thank yes. you very much. Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Ricardo, for inviting me to this meeting today. And thank you very much also to Anna. Um, I really found re uh, very interesting this, um, this center. I really think that you do a lot of amazing things to help single parent uh, position to bring them into society. So thank you very much and congratulations. Uh, going to my to my question to my analysis because I just want to um, ask you something, but also to to ask you for an advice. Uh, I don't know if you have heard about the Swedish theory of love. Uh, it's a documentary that I've seen. It's um, Gandini, I mean, uh, uh, it's the director of this documentary, and this concept of Swedish theory of love stands for. Uh, that all authentic human relationships have to be based on the fundamental independence between people. Mm, I even, because for, I didn't uh, introduce myself, I'm studying right now here in Madrid, and I'm doing international relations and journalism. So I've been looking that in a lot of places, uh, this problem of in, um, Yes, of independence in people is at the core of a lot of problems. So, Anna, from your perspective as director of Single Parents Center, do you really think that individualism is one of the main problems? And how can we tackle this um, individualism problem in order to integrate single parents and also people in general into society? Thank you. Well, um, I've been asked several times why I think there are so many single parent families in the world. And uh, my answer is, I don't know. In some cases, it is, very, it is very easy to answer. When somebody loses a partner by, you know, somebody is widowed, then it's, uh, this is something that we cannot, we cannot fight against. But when you talk about divorces or when you talk about, for example, mothers who are left alone during pregnancy, which is, which is not very rare, um, sometimes I, I have the feeling that people get divorced or people get separated earlier than they should. That for some reason, very often we, we don't feel good in a situation. And the first reaction is, okay, let's get rid of it. Let's start something new because this, this is not going to work. I think this is quite a common concept nowadays that we prefer buying something new than repairing something which we have had for a while. And sometimes it is true in, uh, I think in our human relations as well. So what I always tell people when they turn to me, whether they should do this or that, I always say that first try to repair what you have. First, try to look into what you can do to keep what you have, because, um, because children need their father and their mother, and uh, as long as they can, as long as parents can do that. So I think that, uh, that individualism may be one source of this um, not wanting or not having the strength or the energy to mend, to repair what we have. Um, but probably it's uh, now in in the 21st century. It is a it is a very very complex problem. So I would say that probably this is one part of the the whole big picture. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Perfect. We have uh, another question from the chat box from uh, Rodolfo Ganonico. Just for clarification. Your activities are run only by volunteers or are there uh, professional staff working at the center? Yes, we have a staff of 12 people uh, and uh, they are the employees of our center. 
and the 70 plus volunteers um, they are professionals as well i mean uh, these are psychologists lawyers teachers so they are professional people working on a voluntary basis for the center and actually let me just add just just one more thing that this is part of the reason why we can offer all our services for free so parents don't have to pay for these services and part of the reason we can solve that or we can arrange that is that uh, that actually we don't have to pay for many of these services okay rodolfo is thanking you very much for your answer we have another question from ignacio uh, Socias, uh, where do you get the money for the center from? In the beginning, to set up the center, uh, we needed a larger sum of money, and this was a state support. We got this uh, support to set up this center and operate it uh, from the government. And ever since we have been trying to use every possible pillar that we can build our center on, meaning uh, bids, meaning uh, sponsorship, um, meaning different kind of uh, partnership with companies, with other organizations. And, um, and we rely on uh, state support as well. But I think that we have to be very conscious about not standing just on one foot, but to build as many things as possible. And part of this pillar or one of these feet is working as a, as a social enterprise as well. So we have certain activities that we, uh, that we get money from so that we can finance our social activities. Okay, great. Ignacio, thanking you too. Uh, I have one question for you, Anna. Based on uh, your experience, which are the most psychological uh, problems that children uh, have to face living and growing up uh, with uh, just uh, one parent? I think that um, losing one parent due to any any reason is is difficult for the child i mean getting through a divorce even if the divorce is uh, is 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 relatively friendly is not easy for the child because the base on which his or her life was 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 based on is 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 crumbled or or trembled um, what i have seen is that the most difficult part is when parents stay in a war even after getting divorced or even after separating um, because in this case, children grow up in a battlefield and very often it can last for many years. It is not even rare that actually children grow up and parents still hasn't managed to settle their, their relation. And I think this is the most difficult part for children. Mm -hmm. So what we can do to help our children, even if our marriage doesn't work or even if our relationship doesn't work, is that we remain good co-parents because we can get divorced. We won't be husband and wife in the, in the future, but we will always remain the, these children's parents. So if parents can go on having a normal relationship, it doesn't mean that they have to be friends. It doesn't mean that they have to spend Christmas together. It means that they have to stay in a good contact in order to be good parents and in order to be there for their parents. Oh, I'm sorry, for their children. Many children practically lose their parents. They never see their parents. There are shocking numbers about how very often kids just don't see uh, one of their parents in the future after a divorce. And this is what is the saddest and the hardest thing, I think. Thanks, Sonny Hamma. Okay, we have uh, uh, other two questions and also uh, a hand uh, up of uh, rule of. Okay, uh, going in order, uh, uh, the question is from uh, Mateus uh, Zwitai. Uh, do you plan to expand your activities beyond Budapest or stay focused uh, on the capital? Um. Our center is in Budapest, but we have 
right now we have 11 uh, communities. We have 11, um, we call them clubs all over the country. I mean, in Hungary. And we have two places outside Hungary in the Hungarian uh, part of Romania and Transylvania. So it means that uh, we, have, we are a national organization. So we are all over the country. It means that we offer uh, our services not only to Budapest-based uh, uh, families. For example, when there are holidays or now with our online services, actually we can reach everybody in the country, which is, uh, which is, the, which is the good part of this very bad situation. But also with our communities um, uh, around Hungary, we can, give, um, we can give community and company for parents and children living outside the capital. Okay, great. So let's go to the other question uh, from Mislav Barisic. Do you have recommendations or some examples of good public policy measures you have encountered? How can the society uh, through government action support single parent families? Um, I think that the first step and what I have seen the first step is uh, actually to realize that there are single parent families as well. And when there are family actions or different measures, government measures to support families, it is important to actually think of how or whether it is going to, to enhance or it's going to support single parent families as well. What I mentioned about this invisibility I think this is a, a very serious problem in, in many countries that, that um, the different measures are just, um, are just not right. They just don't work with single parent families. I mean, just a very simple example. When kindergartens close at five o'clock for a single parent, it is impossible to get there in time. So if, if they work, if they work until 4.30 or five o'clock, they just cannot get to the kindergarten and cannot pick up their children in time. And it is very difficult to arrange life when one parent is missing. I don't know if you have, you have children in this, uh, in this meeting. I mean, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to, to arrange everyday logistics, even with two parents. And with one, sometimes you feel that it is, it is just impossible. Of course it is not because single parent uh, children grow up as well, but, uh, but it is very hard. So when you talk about supporting families, it is important to think of this type of families as well. Perfect. Uh, they both thanks you. They both thank you. So we have the last question uh, of uh, Roloff that maybe he wants to do it on welcome. Let's see. Yeah, okay. We can't hear you. Wait. Ah, um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Now we can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, good. Um, thank yeah, thank, thank you for the talk, uh, Anna, and uh, thank you for uh, uh, well, <laughs> leading everything good in directions, uh, Ricardo. Um, I had a question, and I hope you can answer it, uh, Anna, because um, I was wondering if you want to uh, help. Women, of course, I think most most uh, single parents uh, parents would be mothers, of course. Um, is it? Do you have some contacts with uh, different corporations or uh, companies that you can uh, so you can help them on track to to get a job? How do you do this? Thank you. Yes, yes, you are right. These are mainly mothers, and almost ninety percent of single parents are mothers. But it means that there are just in Hungary there are forty thousand or oh thousand that is uh, bringing up their children on their own. So this is, uh, this is, this is, this is not only for, for women. Um, actually our program, this, um, this employment program is, uh, is quite, a, quite a special one, I think. What we try to do is actually to make employers realize and make and, and, um, and think of the, the special circumstances these families live on and actually to make it very clear 
from the beginning that they have some special needs, for example, in timing, for example, when the child is sick and they have to stay at home. So when you are a parent, some things just change in your work and your employment life as well. When you are a single parent, even more things change. So what we try to do is to to actually make a, a kind of an agreement in the beginning. It doesn't have to be a written agreement, just to make it clear and realize that this is something that they have to deal with when, uh, when employing this, this parent. But employing a single parent is not only a problem, because when you are a single parent, then you know very well how to manage your time. You are very uh, concentrated because you know that you will have to stand up at 4.30, so you won't go out for a long coffee break because, because you have to be very focused. So there are certain good things. I mean, your time management, your logistical skills, and a lot of different things become like much, much better than before. So I think that uh, having this type of contact with, with companies is, um, is something that we have to develop even more because a hundred people is, is quite a good thing. I mean, when you find a job for a hundred people, but there are a lot more people that you have to find a job for. So we will try to do our best to prepare employers and to prepare parents as well for this cooperation. Everyone, uh, you want to reply? I saw your hand up, I don't know. Uh, I think it's it's a perfect answer. Um, it's very good to know how the dynamics of this this works, and uh, I can fully understand what you are saying because uh, as I've there was a minister I don't know if she was from Hungary or perhaps from Russia or some some country and she also she was a minister. You, you must know who she is, but she also had I think four or even five kids, so children, and um, she said the same that that she, she it, the, the, having this this job being a minister. Um, inside the cabinet is, is a very demanding job, of course, but since she had her children, she was much more efficient with, with planning. So having these tasks on your shoulders can be a burden, but it's also a way of, of uh, well, getting ahead or uh, having this mindset to really uh, work it out. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Rulof. Okay, we are in perfect time. So I think uh, we can conclude our meeting. Uh, I just want to say that the video recording uh, and uh, uh, the audio podcast will be published on YouTube. So I thank you, Anna, for your words. Uh, and I greet everybody, all the auditors. I would like to thank you very much for the invitation and for, for your interest. And, and I wish you all the best. Perfect. So goodbye in the chat box. Everyone is greeting you, is thanking you. So have a nice weekend and uh, I am the call.